and welcome to the Virtual Groom Room. My name is Jack, your host, and today I'm bringing you a bit of a different video. I was tagged in a 54321 tag video by my uh, good friend DK Down Fine Shave, and uh, he nominated me to give you some of my favorite products. And the format of this is pretty simple. Um, I guess to understand it, just check the description below, and you'll you'll see, or just keep watching and you pick it up. But uh, before we get started, I'm going to tag my good friend Chris Madden. He's very busy. I hope he can do it. And uh, another shaver I've been watching since I started this, and it's Spencer Frankel from Australia. Spencer's um, around my age. Like he's not. Well, I think he's even younger than me. Spencer Frankel. He has some incredible gear. And he's very honest with his opinions, kind of part of my criteria in terms of people I watch anyway. Um, so Chris Madden, Spencer Frankel, I'd love to see your opinions. Um, I need to give you my top five soaps and um, kind of why they're my top five soaps, scents, etc. And number one is going to be from Talbot Shaving, and this is Cole's Pond. Now, this was actually the first soap I bought from Talbot Shaving. And more recently, I've gotten quite friendly with Chad, the artisan of Talbot Shaving. Uh, the scent of this, if I was to describe the scent of this to you, the way I would describe it is very mossy, it's very green. But ultimately, at the heart of everything, it's an aquatic scent. Do you hear that? Wow. Ultimately, it's an aquatic scent. It's probably about a six or a seven in terms of scent strength. It's really, really nice. This is pretty much on Obtanium now. You're not going to be able to buy this. Uh, it's my favorite Talbot shaving scent. It's one of my favorite scents, period. I'm not going to be doing these in order because I don't know the order. They're just some of my favorites. Um, number two of five. Uh, this is a polarizing artisan in the industry. Not a lot of people like the artisan himself. I, I think there's one thing that's undeniable is the fact that he makes some absolutely amazing scents. And this is uh, Australian Private Reserve. This is Bombora. Again, another aquatic. It's, it's just so unique. That, so, as I pretty much the same as Cole Spawn. At heart, it's an aquatic scent. But it has notes of like seaweed and ambergris. There's citrusy notes in there. There's green notes in there. It's very, very unique. Another thing you'll notice with a lot of these soap bases or soaps I'm choosing is the fact that I really enjoy working with these soap bases. And this V2 APR base is not different, you know. It's very, very good to use. Uh, th th those things tend to go hand in hand for me. You know, I, I if I absolutely love a scent, and I completely understand why someone would buy a soap solely for the scent. It has to, it has to be up to snuff in terms of performance as well. And that's just how my brain works. I cannot, I struggle to use something that I think is objectively worse than something else. It's just the way my brain works. Or subjectively, although it's, it's debatable, isn't it? Because your mileage may vary and all that, but there's... I mean, it's difficult to deny that some things are absolutely fantastic. Another one is Grooming Department, NY Sheepra. Now, this is a traditional Sheepra scent, but it has like this, it's just incredible. It has this element of um, very, very floral aspect to it. It is genuinely one of the nicest scents Mo from Grooming Department has created. It's very spicy, it's very floral. Exactly as you would expect from a Shebra, uh, but it has this deep floral aspect that is very, very quite unique. Um, it's a lovely scent. Again, probably unobtainium at this point. Kind of like all three of these so far, which is kind of bad, but <laughs> yeah. Lovely scent, NY Shebra by Grooming Department. And now, I, I, I think I can categorically say that this is my favorite scent. Anyone that watches this channel recently, or at any point, knows I'm a sucker for tea scents. And the Noir at Vanille, or TNEV by Noble Otter, just is the definition of what I want from a tea scent. It has bergamot, loose black tea, jasmine, strawberry, and vanilla. It just creates this incredible, like, 
sweet florally tea scent. I mean, tea for me is the most prominent note in this. But yeah, it's so good. It's almost done as well. So I'm gonna have to get a new tub of this. It's absolutely wonderful. It, I would say it's my favorite scent. When the um, when the scent notes came out on this, or when when I bought this, rather, uh, I really, really wanted an EDP or an EDT. And when he finally announced that EDT, I was ecstatic, you know, because this is an amazing scent. The EDT is just as good as well. So I'm, I was chuffed with that. So that was uh, the Noir Vanille by Noble Otter. And the last one, this isn't going to be a virtual groom room video without talking about uh, Pizza Charcales, I don't think. Um, this is Pedro Fiasco. Now, this is a cologne dupe. Uh, the cologne dupe is is Reflection Man. This is nicer than Reflection Man, in my humble opinion. Uh, some Peter, in my opinion, is the best at reimagining cologne scents. Uh, this isn't a direct clone with Reflection Man at all. This is definitely his own take on Reflection Man, and because of that, it's very, very unique. I would say it's a little darker than Reflection Man. Reflection Man is quite bright. I'd say its most prominent notes in Reflection Man is Basil, but he's managed to darken it up, and this has now turned into something quite mysterious and sexy. It's a wonderful scent. Pedro Fiasco from the club, he has discontinued it. Uh, if you want it, you're going to have to bug him, because you are missing out. Okay, so that's my five soaps. Uh, to go over them again, that's Coles Pond by Talbot Shaving, an aquatic with kind of like green herbaceous notes. The second one was also an aquatic and that was from Australian Private Reserve and that was Bombora. My third was from Grooming Department in the Donkey Milk Base and that was NY Shebra, a traditional Shebra with heavy notes of florals and spicy scents, absolutely wonderful. My absolute favorite scent, which is Noble Otter, the Noir Vanille, which is a, at its heart, a tea scent with hints of sweetness and, I guess, floral notes. It's absolutely wonderful. And the last, but not least, is Pedro Fiasco by The Club, which is a reimagination of Reflection Man by Amage, uh, better than the cologne, in my humble opinion. So... Number four now, and number four is going to go on to my favorite aftershave products or post-shave products. Now, um, I've not done this based on scent. I've done this based on performance because I like all the matching splashes of those, pretty much. But if I was going to say based on performance, this is going to be no surprise to any of you. This is number one, and this is, in my opinion, the best aftershave product all around. Uh, this is... Male Grooming's Frankenlime. This, this scent in itself is a uh, Frankenlime, so it's frankincense of lime. But as far as the performance of this aftershave goes, I think it, I, I just think it's second to none. I don't think there's an aftershave that really competes with this in terms of performance. It's face feel of that is if you're using a very, very high quality aftershave balm, but it, like I've had a few rough shaves over this past year. I think everyone has. And honestly, it, it heals your skin. Like, it does a fantastic job in healing your skin. It contains denatured alcohol, a very small amount, organic witch hazel, vegetable glycerin, aloe vera juice, essential oils, yoga oil, uh, fractionated coconut oil, castor oil, menthol, liquid lanolin, grapeseed extract, um, grapefruit seed extract, sorry. So yeah, some fantastic botanical and skin food ingredients here. You're going to notice that with all of my stuff. I do not like traditional aftershaves. I think, you know, being the opinionated guy that I am, I think they're a waste of time. Uh, if you're going to apply an, an old style aftershave to your skin, use a cologne because the scent lasts around longer or just use straight alcohol because it's almost pointless. But this has the nourishment of a balm with the healing properties of a very, very good botanical aftershave. And this is easily my number one. My number two is is also going to be a spoiler from a video you have coming up, but this is the only uh, this is the only aftershave I have in this formula. This is Barrister and Man's Deltas, and this is in Nordist. Uh, this is a lovely scent, um, but we're not going to go based on the scent. We're going to go based on the performance of the splash. I might say it has a slightly uh, higher alcohol content than male grooming splash. 
But again, it's level of skin food ingredients. This has more ingredients, I believe, and I'll read them to you now. Denatured alcohol, um, witch hazel, uh, witch hazel distillate, he called it. Then he, this is um, aniva sativa, uh, kernel protein, <laughs> uh, calendula, flower extract, Wow, that's a word. Sac saccharide isomerate, sodium lactate, pro propanadiol, aqua. Just trust me, there's a lot of ingredients in this. I'll put the I'll put the ingredients for this down below. This is a really nice scent, but ultimately it's the botanical ingredients in this, it's the skin food properties of the splash that are really what I like about it. Uh Delta's formula by Barrister and Man is another one. Uh, again, I have to mention my good old pal Peter here. Uh, I think his aftershave splashing skin food is absolutely incredible. I used it this morning with the shave I recorded, and I really couldn't ask for more in terms of the performance from this. I'd say it's a little bit more drying than the previous two. I think the previous two performed slightly better, but that's no slight on this. This is fantastic stuff, uh, which is why it's in my top four. His scents are quite strong and they do last a while. I don't tend to look for that in aftershaves. I think it's important I say. What I look for in an aftershave is uh, skin healing properties and skin nourishment properties. I have over 35 colognes. I, I don't need something that replaces a cologne for me because a cologne is, does a better job ultimately. But this is a fantastic aftershave splash and skin food. If you haven't checked it out, check that out. That is Ariana and Evans aftershave base. And I couldn't do a video without shouting out um, the the maker of the best balm in the industry. Uh, I've tried lots of balms. I've tried Sterling's balms, Ginger's Garden balms, Wickham's balms, and nothing really compares to this. And there's a few there's a few reasons why, and I'll explain them. So this is Singari's Singari Men's Standard Aftershave Balm. She does a Sego aftershave balm now, which is a bit heavier, probably not suited suited to my skin type per se, but it's still very very good. Um, this aftershave balm, I would say, it has fantastic skin nourishing ingredients, but something that I find quite unique about it is I think it has quite a lot of oils in it, but the le the level of absorption it has is absolutely outstanding. Um, something that really annoys me with balms, I've used good balms in the past, that they don't absorb fast enough for me, and I, I really hate that greasy layer on, them, on my skin. I have very oily skin. I don't particularly know why, but I do. And I need a balm that absorbs quickly, otherwise it causes things like this, it causes me acne. And this absolutely does the job for that. Another good thing on those aftershaves, if you have oily skin, I found they absorb very, very quickly too. So um, that's my number four. Uh, I've got Male Grooming's aftershave formula, absolutely incredible. I've got um, Nordust or the Delta's formula by Barrister and Man, also wonderful. A&E's aftershave formula, incredible, and the best balm in the industry, in my humble opinion, and that's Zingari Man. Now, this is my number three, and the theme for this is the three brushes. This was difficult for me, actually, because um, I have three brushes that I like. I don't quite... Where I really like the artistry of brushes and how, I guess, the general aesthetic of a brush, the knot is incredibly important to me. Like, like I said with the soap section, I cannot use something that just looks beautiful. It has to be functional. And uh, I'd say all of these knots or um, brushes are very functional. So let's get started here. Um, this is my, one of my favorite brushes, in fact. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include photos of all of these brushes, because I don't think the cameras quite do this justice. This is my um, brush from Black Anvil Shaving, and this is called the Nadrigil. The reason why this is so cool to me is when I first started traditional wet shaving, these wooden brushes are the things that really caught my eye. I really like this old style classy look of a wooden brush. And this brush specifically is made out of 5,000 year old Irish oak. Uh, Marek from Black Anvil Shaving, in my opinion, is probably the best wood maker as well as El Druida. Um, he is absolutely incredible. He makes some wonderful brushes and this knot, he's not known for his knots, but this is a 26 mil kind of like bulb silver tip knot, and it performs very, very well. It's incredibly soft. In fact, I think it's even one of the softest badger knots I own. 
This is a wonderful brush, and as I said, I'll give you a close-up somewhere on the screen when I first introduced it. It's just wonderful. Um, it's called Nadragil. He's still making brushes if you're interested. I would highly recommend it. Now this, um, this is a, this is a mixture of the two here. I think the 30 mil knot from this guy performs better than the 28 mil knot, but the 28 mil knot possibly has, in my opinion, one of his best looking brush handles he's ever made. Now, the story behind this brush, and I've used this on my channel a few times, and this is what I call the Poseidon brush. This is a very, very unique brush from Milton. He's never made anything else like this. And he's told me that he probably won't be able to make anything like this again. This is a bit of an experiment for him. He was working on it for a few weeks and he decided that, okay, I really like this. And I was lucky enough to be contacted first. He showed me the brush and I just said, hey man, I have to have that brush. It's, it's wonderful. Um, the, the knot I have inside this is a 28 mil V3 tip knot fan. And as much as the knot is wonderful in itself, it's got a very nice spring, really good splay. Um, just the right amount of backbone for me to face lather, but honestly, the camera does not do the intricacy of this brush justice. And I'm going to show you a close up of that. Um, just a sec. So you'll see that somewhere on the screen when I first introduced it. My last brush is new to me. Um, this is not my first delve into like the premium hand tied brush market, but I would say this is better than the other premium hand tied brush I have. And this is my Declaration B8. Uh, no. B6 Autumn Glory. This is a 28 mil B6 knot from hand tied declaration knot. Um, I don't think, honestly, this may sound controversial. I don't think his handles are particularly amazing. Um, the shapes are fairly, fairly simple to, to create and his colors are what it is. But honestly, I've chosen this for this knot. It's very, very soft. But what this knot has, in my opinion, it has the perfect qualities to make a incredibly good face lather. It has really good backbone. It has incredibly jelly tips and its face fill is just second to none. It's very, very nice. This is the Decoration B6. Um, he calls it Autumn Glory mainly because of the handle colors you can see here. It's wonderful. It's very, it's, it's a thing that I would call more function over form. It's not the prettiest brush by, to, like, by any means, but I would, it's, it's not a bad looking brush. Don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not the most attractive brush in the world. And the, the knot is just absolutely outstanding. Um, and that's my three. So that's uh, my three brushes. So I've got the Nadrigil by Black Anvil Shaving. I've got the Poseidon brush by Turn and Shave. And I've got the um, Declaration B6 in Autumn Glory handle style. Uh, that's a Jefferson and that's a 28mm knot. Um, Number two. So my number two are the two razors I've decided to choose. Now, for anyone that doesn't watch my channel regularly and has stumbled across this, uh, I need to outright say that I am the business developer for Carve Shaving Co. And it's important for me to caveat that although I do work for Carve Shaving Co., I was a fan longer than I've been working for them. The reason I worked for Carve Shaving Co. is because I fell in love with the razor and noticed Chris needed help with that side of the business and what I'm doing now. So I offered to do that, but before I worked for the company, I had the brass Christopher Bradley razor and it, it showed me actually how good shaves could be. Um, I, I think these razors are unparalleled in terms of how smooth they are, especially if you're considering the amount of base plates it has to go. It's easy if you're designing one base plate or two base plates to make your razor smooth, but honestly, anyone that has used the carve will tell you, especially the higher base plates, um, I'm choosing the Carve Christopher Bradley in stainless. Now, I have every carve, as you would imagine. I have the polished version. I have the aluminum version. The reason I choose this is because this was, this is probably my most highly anticipated part of bit of hardware I've, I have in my den. When I got this, I, there was something about the brass. I don't like how brass patinas very much, and that's quite common within the community. But what I would say is the reason I wanted this is because I loved the brass razor so much and I know how good the performance can be. In terms of metal density, brass and stainless aren't too different. Brass is, has slightly more density, but not enough to really make a difference with the shave. I wanted this mainly for the aesthetic and I knew what handle this is. This is the Argyle handle. And in my opinion, as far as patterns go, I don't think there's a better looking handle aside from the Darwin handle Wolfman does, which takes a lot more time. Uh, but yeah, Carve Christopher Bradley. 
I don't think there's a smoother razor than this. And if there is, I've, I've probably used it and I disagree with you. Um, wonderful, wonderful razor. And it's an honor for me to work with that company. My second razor is fairly new to me. And this was sent to me by uh, Chris Madden, uh, another car above, one of the people I tagged in this. Um, this is uh, the home-like start razor made in Russia. This has three different base plates. This is a 0.9 base plate, both in safety bar and OC, a 0.68 a base plate, which is probably a bit too mild for me, and a 1.18, which is quite aggressive. But the thing that I think makes this very unique, one, it hides the blade tabs. If you care about that, you care about that. It's incredibly smooth. This is one of the smoothest razors I've used. I put this just slightly less smooth than the Christopher Bradley razor. It's very heavy and it has like this tumble sand polish look. It's quite industrial looking and I really do like that about this razor. Ultimately, the reason why I like this so much is because of how it shaves and it shaves like a dream. So my two are the Christopher Bradley razor by Carve Shaving Co. And the second one is the Start Razor by Home Like Shaving. Two fantastic shavers. If you haven't checked them out, I highly recommend them. And last but not least, my number one. And my number one is my number one blade. This was a difficult one for me, because I'd say in the last few months, I've found more blades that I really enjoy, but I'm gonna go with the OG. And the OG is the Pulse Silver Super Iridium. This for me is the perfect balance of both sharpness and smoothness. It's very sharp, but it's also very smooth. And honestly, I look to have comfortable shaves. I don't look to challenge myself too much, aside from the straight razor shaving, of course, but that, that's away from it. This is a fantastic blade. They're very consistently, like, they're consistently leveled in terms of quality. I've never found that I've had many dud blades from these. Uh, yeah, wonderful blade, Pulse Silver Super Iridium. They've been discontinued recently, which is very disappointing for me. I'm gonna look to try and get quite a lot of them in bulk. Uh, if anyone knows where to get them, let me know. Uh, don't keep it as a secret. We all need to help each other in this industry. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my tag video and that's George complaining in the background. Um, you must be sick of my voice by now. I've been talking for 22 minutes, as are you guys. And I'm gonna leave you in a minute. But what I will say is uh, I really look forward to seeing what Chris Madden and Spencer Frank will come up with. Spencer Frankel is a really cool guy and so is Chris Madden. You know who Chris Madden is already. He's one of the bigger guys in the industry, but he's a good friend of mine and I'm curious to see what his opinions are. But yeah, apart from that, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm looking to see what other people have managed to do around this. This is a really cool idea from the community, whoever started it first. And yeah, my name is Jack from the Virtual Groom. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and goodbye for now.